Simply put, process substitution returns a file descriptor and command substitution returns the standard output of the executed command or commands within braces. Let's look at process substitution first. If we use word count with the line flag, we will need to provide word count with a file to count the lines in. So let's do that. So word count opens the file and reads the content, counts the occurrences of new lines, and once it reaches the end of the file, prints the accumulated number, followed by the file name to stand it out. So let's do the same thing with process substitution. As we want to read from our process, we need to use the less than sign, and within our braces, we're going to use sequence. As you can see, we've counted 10 lines from slash dev slash fd slash 63. Let's try the same thing with command substitution. Judging by the 10 errors that we have received, you can see that what command substitution generates is not a file handle, but the output of the command itself. We can duplicate these results manually so you can see exactly what command substitution does. As you can see, the errors that we get are exactly the same. We can also replace word count with echo in our command substitution and process substitution examples to see exactly what the difference is. So to summarize, command substitution substitutes itself with the executed output of its commands in place. And process substitution allows a process's input or output to be referred to using a file name. So I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching. Goodbye.